Hey guys, it's John the Quant here. We are going to start getting into some more, you know, data intensive um, sort of stuff. And the thing about finance data is it can get really big really fast. I mean, imagine if you are working in investment management and let's say your investment universe is just the S&P 500, okay? That's pretty small actually. It's only 500 companies, but that means you've got 500 different time series of prices, then however many factors you have for your model, you've got 500 times that many factors. So it gets really, really big, really, really fast. And as we're going to see, the kind of standard um, data type, like file types, you know, CSV files are just not going to cut it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go into Python. We're going to look at some ways to um, some file formats that make saving and loading those big data files a lot easier. Let's just go to the computer and check it out. Looking at Colab right now, I have Colab Pro, so that gives me about, let's see here, uh, 25.46 gigabytes of RAM. And that's gonna be important later. Uh, these are the kinds of files that we are going to compare, CSV, comma, separated values. It's very, very common. You've also seen probably tab separated values. Um, these are printed as text files that just have a value, a comma, the next value, and so on. Very readable by humans and pretty convenient. Um, we're going to try JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's also very readable. They use it a lot in uh, NoSQL databases. I know uh, MongoDB's um, format that they have, everything they've got going on under the hood is kind of based on JSON. Um, it's not strictly a JSON for reasons that we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, understanding how to work with JSON is very helpful. We're going to talk about XLSX files, um, Microsoft Excel, Open XML Spreadsheet. That's the standard file type for Microsoft Excel. Feather, created by Apache Arrow. Uh, it's said to be very fast, very light, and it's columnar, which means that it reads columns first instead of rows, and that makes it uh, kind of subsetable um, and is a very useful feature. Then we'll talk about Parquet, also by Apache. It's also columnar, and it's designed specifically to be used with the Hadoop system. It works great with Spark and has a lot of nice features going on with it. Uh, HDF5, hierarchical data format number five. It's supposedly very flexible and very fast, and it's binary. And you see it a lot used with time series data. Uh, it has two different file formats, or two different modes, I suppose. And we'll talk about them in a little while. Uh, we'll talk about Pickle, which is the Python specific file type. Uh, you can pickle any Python object and we're going to talk a lot about it but I just wanted to compare it performance wise. Then lastly Avro. It's also by Apache. It's also designed to be used with Hadoop. Um, it stores so it stores the schema and the data separately and the schema is stored like a JSON file and the data is stored as a binary file. So it kind of it stores the information and the way to piece it back together. Um, I've heard a lot of good things. What we're going to see later is that I was unable to use Avro, and there's not really an easy way to use it um, straight from Pandas like there is with the others. Actually, all of these, except for Avro, have really simple read and write methods in Pandas. Um, there's a pandavro package, um, and we'll talk about the problems I had with Avro later on. All right, so we're going to have data types. We're going to make big data frames, and they're either going to be completely numeric. Okay, that's 2,000 numeric columns, 100,000 rows each for a total of, I don't know, 200 million observations. Um, or we'll have mixed, which is 1,000 numeric columns and 1,000 text columns. I had to install the Pandavro package. I'm not running anything in this. We're just talking about it because this took a very long time to run. Just import everything we need. Then here we go. This function just generates the data, 100,000 rows. You set the number of numeric columns, number of text columns, and how long you want those text strings to be. It creates a text string by just generating some random letters, like 10 random letters, and joining them together. Then it concatenates a data frame um, that is 
of the correct size and is all numeric with a data frame that is the correct size and all strings. So if your text columns is set to zero, then there is no second data frame because it has zero columns and you're just getting that first one. I then change the column names to strings and return the data, generate it here, see that it comes out with 100,000 entries, 2,000 columns, and um, this one is mixed actually, I ran the mixed one second, and just the, the data frame by itself is over one and a half gigabytes, so it's, it's pretty big, it's kind of a lot of data. And then we uh, initialized an empty dictionary to store the results in. And I went through each of the file types up here, CSV, JSON, and so on, in exactly the same way. So we're really only going to talk about it once. And look, we did CSV first, and then the JSON actually crashed. It used up all 26 gigabytes of RAM just trying to write it this first time. So I just said JSON was too expensive. I said, did the same with XLSX. Uh, because it just crashed, it couldn't save it, there was not enough RAM, and again, I'm using Colab Pro with 26 gigabytes of RAM, so we really just probably don't want to deal with those file types at all if these other ones work. So let's look at what happened with Feather. First, we created a, we saved the size first, we created a path to the Feather file, then saved it. This is a super easy pandas command, just you get your data frame and then it's just to feather and then give it the file name then you can get the size this in right here we're using a, a time it cell magic and this dash o part tells it to return an object that we can save so this just t times how long it takes to do this it actually does it five times and then says this is how long it takes and then we can save the read time, the output from this cell magic gets saved to read right here. Then we delete the file. Next, we're timing again. This time we're timing how long it takes to write the file, okay, to feather. And saving that write time. And then in the results here, under feather we have the read time, we have the write time, and we have the file size. And we did exactly the same thing with all of them. The parquet, exactly the same. HDF5. Now, HDF5 has two uh, formats, I guess, subformats or something. So it has a table format w where it saves everything as, a, as kind of a pie table. So you can search through these files before loading them, and you can append the files instead of just completely destroying and rewriting them. So it's flexible, it's not as fast as the fixed format down here, but the table format is very flexible and sometimes that is way more important than just raw speed. And then of course fixed format is completely immutable, you can't change every, anything about it, um, you've just got to use the whole thing or not at all. Then we use pickle, and pickle I said we were going to talk about. So. Pickle, you can you can pickle any Python object, and it just takes whatever object you've got in Python and it serializes it, okay, straight into binary, and then it just kind of gives it instructions to recreate that object. And there are a lot of problems with that. Some of the important problems are, okay, you can pickle any object, but when you unpickle the object, when you bring it back, when you load it, it doesn't run the initialization function. That init function from your Python class doesn't get run. So anything important that happens in that function doesn't happen whenever you unpickle an object. And that can cause a lot of big problems. It can just kind of ruin, well, it can really ruin your day if you do that on accident. Another problem with pickle is uh, it's a big security risk. Okay, so it's shockingly easy to write a pickle object that whenever somebody loads it, it can, say, delete all the files in your home directory. It is shockingly easy to make something like that, and it is impossible for a person to tell with that the pickle file is malicious until they've loaded it. So a lot of people will just say don't use pickle at all for those reasons that I laid out and a few other reasons. Um, I say 
I know I know that I've used pickle and that it has been helpful because it can serialize any Python object. Um, I say just kind of know what you're doing, know what you're getting into. Don't ever use a pickle file that you didn't make yourself, and don't save them long term. Like what I've used pickle for in the past was I made say a model in one notebook, pickled it, loaded it in another notebook that had all my data processed in it, and, and ran that. And that works out just fine. It was an easy way to move that model from one place to another, but I wouldn't use it for anything more complicated. And I definitely, no matter what happens with the read and write times, I would definitely never use it for actual data like this. I just wanted to compare it to the others. And Avro, like I said, I've heard a lot of good things about Avro. Um, but I was not able to use it. It crashed everything. So I didn't end up using Avro at all. So for the results, we ended up with, you know, CSV, Feather, Parquet, and Pickle, HDF5 also. Um, I just saved all those to a, to a CSV file. And then let's look at the results for the strictly numeric data. Okay, strictly numeric, all numbers. You can see that CSV was very, very slow in both reading and writing compared to everybody else. You can see that the HDF table read it super fast. Okay, and it also wrote pretty fast, faster than fixed, which is which is pretty surprising. You can also see that pickle was fast, but again, pickle has a lot of problems, and I would probably never use it to actually store data. Now, in the mixed file types, the only ones, this took so much more RAM, I could, was only able to actually save and read the files in pickle, CSV, feather, and parquet format. I was pretty surprised that CSV could handle it whenever like HDF5 and everything could not. But it worked. It was very slow, as you can see, but it worked. Pickle was actually also really slow in handling the mixed file type, which I thought was interesting, and feather being by far the fastest. Look at that read time. It's half the time of parquet, which is, and then parquet is one-fifth the time of pickle, and then pickle is like half the time of CSV. So feather is very, very, very fast, and it also saved it to a pretty small little file, which is also nice. This is just some stuff where I was putting everything together so that we could make this visualization. Um, blue is the mixed data frames. Orange is strictly numeric. And as you can see, with the read time, a pickle actually read the numeric data frame really fast, but not quite as fast as the HDF table. Um, Feather was pretty good. It actually read both of them in about the same time, which is very impressive. When it comes to writing, Feather was by far the fastest for the mix, like we just said. It was also really close to the fastest for numeric. Even though Pickle was also fast for numeric, again, we should never use Pickle for data. The HDF5 files also wrote the numeric data really fast, but again, it didn't work at all with the mixed data. And then in terms of size, um, this one is kind of where there's not as big a difference between the different ones. You can see that Parquet was the smallest file for the mixed, followed by Feather. And then um, Feather was pretty short in all of these, actually. So looking at these graphs, what really stands out to me is that Feather worked for all for all the different data types and it was it may not have been the fastest or the smallest in every category, but it was among the fastest and smallest in every category. So I will probably end up using Feather files to store my data because it really looks like it works out. Now if I was using a Hadoop or like a Spark kind of distributed system, I would probably end up using Parquet because Parquet also does really well and it's specifically designed to work in those environments. And uh, well, if I could get Avro to work, I might end up using Avro. What, what I've heard a lot of places do is that they use Avro for raw data and then after pre-processing the data, then they switch to Parquet. And that's probably a good idea because raw and processed data really need a different kind of storage device. But there we are. Again, I'll probably end up using Feather files for most of the stuff that we do together. If we ever do anything distributed, I'll probably switch over to Parquet, but it's definitely good to know. Well, there we are. We worked together. We went through it. We found out that Feather is probably going to be the file type for us. Um, 
but I'd like to know what, what do you guys think is important in a file type? Is it important that it be readable or do you just care about speed? I know it's really stressful for me when I try to load a big file and it just takes forever. So speed is definitely important. File size also we have to consider. Um, what file types do you guys like? Is there anybody out there with Avro experience who knows that it's just great and we should all be using that? Uh, let me know in the let me know in the comments below. If you learned something, go ahead and like the video. If you want to keep learning and keep going on this journey with me, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, you'll get notified every time I post, and we're going to get a lot of new videos coming out really soon, rapid succession right now. All right, I'll see you guys later.